All right, I think we're good to go. Um, hey guys, uh, my name is Alonzo, and um, I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, Gutenberg. Um, so I guess my first question is um, just to gauge the room. Who would describe themselves as uh, primarily a developer? Cool. Uh, what about primarily as a designer? Cool. What about primarily as an entrepreneur? Okay. And what about as just a user? And ain't nothing wrong with that. Just um, cool. Um, awesome. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about Gutenberg and the way that I'm going to do a little demo and then talk about the ways that I think it's going to change the WordPress uh, paradigm. Um, and the uh, I, sure, I assure you is a reference to a movie I really liked from back in the day, Clerks, um, for those of you that get that. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, so feel free to text me during the, my presentation, um, and I'll try and answer um, any questions I get via text at the end. Um, I know some of you guys uh, are maybe not super excited to ask questions in front of a huge crowd, so there's that. And then also, I'll be around the whole day, um, and uh, feel free to come up to me if you have questions or comments or thoughts. Um, just to tell you a little bit about me, um, I am the CEO at 11 Online. We're a software development shop in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, and uh, we do WordPress still. Um, I think we're doing a lot more application dev, mobile and web application dev. But we still do WordPress. We started out as basically a WordPress exclusive development shop. Um, I've been working with WordPress since 2015. Uh, I, and then our company started a block party um, this year. Uh, I think it came out in April when Gutenberg was supposed to be merged into core. Supposed to, being the important part there. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, I don't really write a ton of code these days, and that's probably good for everyone. Uh, but uh, WordPress is still a very important part of our business, and um, I love WordPress, and so yeah. So, um, you guys probably, some of you guys probably know about Gutenberg and mostly from the controversy of the implementation. Is that, would you, would you guys say that that's a fair assessment? Um, people have heard about Gutenberg and I think a lot of people have the idea that it's going to mess everything up or we're going to, you know, someone's going to fork WordPress um, with the classic editor. And I, do, I don't dismiss definitely the um, problems with implementation, the way the project sort of started, and the communication issues. But I'm not going to really focus on any of that stuff uh, because it's coming. You know, kind of whether or not we want it to come, it's coming. Um, so um, I'm more focused on how it's going to change us and what we do. Uh, so as of a couple of weeks ago, I think it was announced that the, the plan is to merge Gutenberg into uh, core in August. Um, and that in the very near future, in July, uh, there's going to be a minor update of WordPress that's going to encourage people to install Gutenberg. Um, with 5.0, I think it's going to get merged. Um, so what is it? It's the new editor. Right? Uh, for those of you developers, you guys know that the current editor is, uh, uses this library called TinyMCE. It's been around for a long time. Um, so TinyMCE is getting replaced by this thing called Gutenberg. Um, and although TinyMCE is a somewhat what you see is what you get experience, uh, I know you guys, that especially that build WordPress sites, know that that's not really true at least certainly not in the WordPress context. You might put in things in the editor and get something completely different on the front end, depending on the way the theme is coded. Um, but uh, Gutenberg is set up to be a, a true uh, WYSIWYG experience. And the, the, the paradigm is different in that uh, your content is broken up into blocks. Uh, and so if, if any of you guys have used Squarespace, for example, I know that's like a dirty word around here. 
Uh, but uh, if any of you guys have used something like that, there's, uh, you know, you, there's a kind of drag and drop blocks. A bit. So there, it's, it's kind of moving in that, in that kind of direction, right? Um, WordPress 5.0 with Gutenberg merged, it's going to launch with some simple blocks. Uh, I'm going to demo all this stuff just by the way, but you can build custom blocks. You can install plugins that add custom blocks. Uh, and as I s mentioned before, there's, there's definitely a lot of implementation controversy. Um, but again, I'm not really going to get into all that. That's, that's probably someone else's uh, talk. Um, all right. I'm going to try and do a demo. That's usually what happens when I do demos. S something to that effect. So, um, when you install Gutenberg, so by the way, right now you have to install Gutenberg. It's a plugin on the repo. Just look it up. Um, don't install, I would not advise on installing it on a pr production site yet. It's not a finished product. So, Take your, whatever your favorite local development environment, whether it's, you know, some kind of virtual machine or whatever it might be, uh, or a staging site or, you know, something that uh, you don't have to necessarily show in, in public. Install Gutenberg. Um, and what happens is, uh, by default, the, um, you know, any new posts and pages uh, use the Gutenberg editor. And what's really neat is uh, when you install Gutenberg, there's actually, um, I'll show you. Uh, if you, when you install Gutenberg, can you guys see that or should I zoom in? Zooming in is better. Yeah, when you install Gutenberg, if you take a look, see right there, you get that menu and then it says uh, demo. If you click that, uh, you're gonna see this and it's a demo of, uh, a Gutenberg uh, post. It says, welcome to the Gutenberg editor. Um, and so this is what it looks like on the back end. This is a title. This is a cover image block, all right? What's really neat is if the theme supports it, you can do full width blocks, right? Like full width of the, um, of the viewport. So if you take a look, it's pretty neat. Um, and the way Gutenberg works is uh, for many blocks, right, you have settings that you can adjust within the block. So I can make this, uh, there you go. Uh, so you have settings within the block, right? You can do alignments and so forth. Uh, and then you have advanced settings off, uh, over there, right? Um, so I have it on fixed background, but you don't need to, right? You hit update, refresh on this side, and um, it's, it's, it's a fixed image now, right? Whereas before, I'm sorry, it, what, it, it, <laughs> um, if you uh, take a refresh, now it's, now it's fixed and it's kind of like that fake parallax effect sort of thing going on. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna walk you through kind of some of these other, this is a text block, right? You can do different alignments. Um, this is a heading block. Another text block. This is an image block. Uh, you can do captions. Very similar, right? But I think what, what I want to highlight here, and the important piece, is that this actually looks very similar to this. Just about the same thing. And um, I think that is, the, that is the big difference, right? Um, how many people that build WordPress sites, how many of you guys use uh, metaboxes, custom metaboxes? like advanced custom fields or CMB2 or there's different, and then you know you have page builders that build in meta boxes and stuff like that. So um, 
So yeah, uh, it's a it's a it's a different thing, right? And you know, you, you put content in each meta box. Each meta box is styled, but oftentimes on the front end it looks like one thing, the back end it looks like a completely different thing. Um, so that's how this paradigm is different. Um, again, uh, these are the very simple blocks that are going to ship with Gutenberg. So this is a gallery, uh, gallery block, right? You can add add images, right? Etc. Um, you can change the note, you can change the columns here in this uh, in this setting for the gallery, right? How many of you guys use plugins to build galleries? Pro probably some. No. Um, so yeah, this is actually a pretty neat and different solution, um, easier solution in my mind. Uh, and again, you can check that out. You know, you have video embed blocks and all sorts of stuff, right? And that's it. That's the that's the default Gutenberg install with the default blocks. Okay. And so you might think, okay, well, that's not a big deal. Who cares, right? It's a slightly better way to create content. All right, awesome. Um, and I think, from my standpoint, uh, if that's all Gutenberg was then I wouldn't be excited about that. But I want to show you something different. So this is a post I made in Gutenberg. By the way, the theme is just using the Gutenberg theme. There's a theme that you can use with Gutenberg. It supports full width. That's about it. It's basically underscores that supports full width. Um, so what I did is I made a, I, I was too lazy to actually write a um, post on baseball. And so I baseball ipsumed it a little bit here. Um, and uh, so when I came to the United States as a kid, um, my, uh, my dad was a med student in uh, Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. And uh, we lived in Queens in um, Woodside. And so uh, we moved to the United States in 1985. So I was four years old. And uh, if anyone of you guys knows anything about baseball, um, the uh, great New York baseball team at that time was not the Yankees, it was the Mets. And we lived in Queens. And in 1986, they won the World Series. Anyway, long story short, um, I became a Met fan at that, that point. I saw games in 86 and 87 and 88. Um, and um, it's been a lot of sadness ever since. Uh, but um, what I wanted to show you is uh, the possibilities of what you can create with Gutenberg with some custom blocks. And um, how many of you guys read sports blog posts, blogs? Uh, anyone? Yeah. OK. I, I like baseball. I like football. Um, and a lot of times you read these blog posts, especially like the you know sabermetric statistic blog posts, and they have a lot of data visualization, right? Um, charts, sheet, you know, tables, etc. Um, and so, uh, so I, you know, using some custom blocks that we at my company um, made, um, I wanted to show you the, some of the possibilities. So, we take a look. Uh, here's the title. Heading block, paragraph block, and this is a custom block that we made called uh, pie charts it's for block party. Okay, and if I click on it, um, here I can set the title, and I can add values, right, and uh, slices essentially, right. Add slices over here. So let me add a slice. Um, And what's neat is you get a preview right below, right? And if you'll notice, our chart updated with the slice I added. I can add more slices. I can um, change the colors in each slice over here. I can explode a slice over here. So for example, 
I exploded uh, contrarians who hate the Yankees. These are, by the way, this, this chart is the origin of Met fandom, OK? Um, and uh, so I can ex explode a slice here. Um, I can make my pie chart 3D over here, right? Um, I can adjust the position of the legend. So if I want it to be on the left instead, put it on the left. Um, I can set the height, et cetera. And let's not make this 3D. Um, I can rotate the pie chart whatever way I want. Um, et cetera. I can, can make a donut hole. Um, uh, anyway, if you, if you dig that sort of stuff. And then I hit, um, I hit update. And it updates at some point. Oh, yeah, it did. And I give this a refresh. And bam, I have a pie chart. Um, and uh, I don't know if there are any Met fans in the room, but uh, I think probably these two cover it, majority-wise. Uh, I had to throw this in there because I, I have a friend that this is exactly why. He just has a bad relationship with his dad, and his dad likes the Yankees. So, Anyway, um, OK. So let me uh, kind of scroll down. And uh, again, more baseball Ipsum. And then I made. Um, uh, I made a uh, line chart, and I, I called it Mets losses in the last four years. If you'll notice, in 2018, uh, 47 losses so far. We're not even at the All-Star break, so that's bad. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, you can visualize it. Uh, you can set so the way we have it set up. You can set uh, axis label format. You can set grid lines. Um, you can make it curve or not. Uh, this is a kind of neat setting to just sort of make it bigger. It's sort of, and then you can, you can set an area. Some of these settings, you know, so a lot of this stuff is just Google data visualization stuff that we hooked in, essentially. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, um, hit update. And uh, this is what it looks like on this end. And uh, you know, like I like I said, that is going to be up here probably by the end of the year. Um, but uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, then I wanted to show off a a, a carousel or slider, right? Uh, how many of you guys use plugins to make sliders? Um, who is happy with their slider plugin? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Revolution. Revolution. Okay. Hey, um, not to talk smack on revolution, but have you guys ever heard of the Panama Papers? Just look up revolution slider Panama Papers on Google in your spare time. Um, anyway, um, so uh, you look at the carousel. Uh, you look at the carousel. I've never used a carousel that I really loved. Uh, and you know, I think most of the time, it's like with revolution slider, you can do a lot of things. but. A lot of times when we're building sites, we don't want to give clients a five million options. Um, you know, we want to keep it simple for them so they can focus on their content. Um, and so, you know, I've always felt like uh, this this process of making a slider in, in WordPress has always been kind of a pain. Um, and so, uh, this is how you make a slider with this custom Gutenberg block. Um, you can select images. Um, you can add a caption. So, see here, traded to division rival, right? Um, kills us. Every time, right? And um, you can you know, rearrange the position. Uh, you can um, apply a backdrop opacity, right? So you see what happens there. Um, you can set, and then the advanced settings for the whole slider, you can um, set an autoplay interval. You can do rounded corners. You can show indicators or not. Uh, you can show the image captions, the description, and so forth, right? Um, 
Add update. And there you go. Made my slider of uh, Matt's grades. Uh, and uh, as you'll see, um, in the spirit of a true Met fan, um, I can't really focus on the positives. Why would that be? So, uh, you know, um, for the most part, you know. Oh, yeah, that's Nolan Ryan. We traded him in the 60s. He only became, like, one of the greatest pitchers ever. Um, but anyway, yeah, somehow we'll screw this up. I know we will. We'll figure some way out. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so that's a, that's a slider um, in Gutenberg uh, with, uh, with our custom uh, block. So we also made a pop-up block, like a modal block, right? And so um, it's called Mets No Hitters. Here's the pop-up title. I threw in a video. Um, and then uh, you can set the animation, right? So if this is something that really moves you, you can set how it uh, uh, display, how the size of it. You, know, you can set the animation. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff, colors and so forth. Um, yeah. And um, check this out. You can watch a uh, can watch a, uh, a a Met throw no hitter. Sorry, MLB. Okay, they'll, they'll probably sue me here. So, uh, but uh, notice uh, notice that his arm fell off right after this. It, it did actually. Um, he threw the no hitter. It was amazing, and then he was never the same. Anyway, uh, so yeah, how many of you guys have like put in modals and pop ups and things in, in WordPress uh, in a post, let's say, or tried to? Um, it's a drag. I, you know, again, I've used WordPress a lot, and it's just, it's a pain. So, you know, being able to have a drag and drop solution that's, that's fairly easy to use um, is good. Uh, and then uh, the last one I want to show off is, uh, uh, again, it's another custom block. It's called uh, Statistic, right? Um, you know, w with a lot of the blocks that we built, uh, we tried to just, you know, build your, your kind of basic web design UI. I don't love sliders, and I don't love pop-ups, and I don't love um, statistics, but we just tried to think of the kinds of design patterns and UI that people use all the time uh, in WordPress. And so uh, this is one I see all the time, right? And for this one, you can set the color, and you can set, set it to count up, right? Um, and so, so that's the way it looks. There we go. All right. 22. You know? 1986. It's five years old. Uh, a lot of sadness ever since. But, um, but that's not why you're a Met fan, you know, for happiness. Come on. Uh, anyway, so, so, uh, so yeah, that's just an example of what's possible with Gutenberg. I, I think that. For a lot of people, they might install Gutenberg. They might play around with blocks and think, OK, whatever. Um, this is what's possible. Um, and uh, you're going to see a lot of groups, companies, individuals put out custom blocks um, for, for Gutenberg, for the new editor. By the way, it's, it's Gutenberg now, but it's just the new editor very soon. right? It's just going to be part of the thing. Um, so uh, this, these are the possibilities. Imagine giving your clients, let's say you're, you're an entrepreneur, you have a WordPress business, giving your clients the ability to create really, really rich content easily like that without having them call you and adding whatever. It's, you really, it's, 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 I, think, I really believe it's going to um, create a situation where you can deliver a lot of, a lot of value for your clients. OK. Um, so that was a demo. Um, I'm really happy that that went relatively smoothly. No burning Christmas tree. Um, OK, so I'm just, again, I'm just going to cover, um, just going to cover, uh, these are my opinions. And they're always subject to change, because things change all the time. 
Um, just uh, these are my opinions, and I'm sure there's going to be people that might disagree, and that's totally cool. Um, so for content creators, it's, it's WYSIWYG finally, for real. Um, why are there page builders? Why does WordPress have a lot of, why are there page builder plugins? It's uh, meeting a need, right? Um, it's meeting a need. And uh, so, and one of the benefits of page builders is a lot of times it really is what you see is what you get experience, or more so, certainly, than the default experience. So finally, uh, we're, we're creating something in core that's going to address um, a lot of those same concerns. Um, you don't need to do things in custom meta boxes anymore. So when we build websites for clients, we use CMB2. We do custom meta boxes and we style the meta boxes, all that stuff. And I'm sure a lot of you guys that build websites do similar things. Um, it's a different paradigm. And I'm really, really excited um, at you know, having all the post content in one place. Um, again, this is what I was trying to highlight. Uh, potentially, there's going to be a wide range of blocks that are going to let you do lots and lots of cool things easily. Again, no need to install a junky plugin that has 5 million settings when your clients only need two. Um, there's going to be a. Um, I think there's going to be a, a whole ecosystem of Gutenberg blocks um, out there real soon. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's like the best of a page builder without all the junk. So again, this is my opinion. And I'm not saying all page builders are junk. That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, what I'm saying is uh, a lot of page builders have a lot of cruft. And there's a lot of other issues around page builders in terms of post content, um, if you want to change themes, you don't want to use that page builder. Um, each page builder has a different way of storing content. So it's, there's, a, there's a lot of issues. So this is, a, a, this is going to eventually be a page builder without all the cruft of a lot of these uh, page builder plugins. Um, for developers, this is really key here. Uh, what are the changes? React. React JS. It's not, I'm not saying React, I'm saying. React JS. Uh, it's a it's a JavaScript framework um, for kind of more complex uh, front end stuff, and uh, Gutenberg is React powered. Uh, there's there's a PHP side to it, but it's React powered. And so for a lot of developers that are very accustomed to being PHP guys and kind of in their in their lane for WordPress development, um, this is a, a major learning challenge. Um, What's really cool about this for, for my company is we, we do a lot of React work in our application dev work. And so for us, it was just kind of a natural, hey, this is awesome. It kind of combines a lot of stuff we're doing right now. Um, with theme, theme development, it's going to be different. It's going to be block-based. You're still going to have templates, but they're going to be templates of locked-in blocks. Um, and so I think. I think the whole theme development, standard theme development workflow that a lot of people use is going to change. I don't exactly know the f how, but I have some ideas. And um, we're starting to build sites for Gutenberg, uh, to use with Gutenberg. So I'm really excited to see how theme development evolves. Um, uh, so for those of you that maintain sites, when 5.0 comes out, um, you're probably going to have to do things to keep your clients happy, or at least not have them freak out. And um, that's, that's challenging. And I'm not, certainly, I'm not tr trying to be the preach the gospel of Gutenberg. It's coming. Whether or not we want it, it's coming. And, um, and certainly, those in the business of supporting clients, they're going to have challenges. That's, that's, there's no doubt. But where there's challenges, there are opportunities. Right. Um, so, for example, a lot of our clients that we've been building sites for a long time, you know, we've let them know, hey, this is a new thing. You know, we can build your site to take advantage of this and make it a lot easier for your content creators. And a lot of people are really interested. And then we're moving, we're proceeding. So there's there's opportunities here. Um, so yeah, you know, people focus on the challenges, and it's important to think to think those things through. But I think uh, it's also equally important if you're an entrepreneur to to take the plunge. Um, 
And I think here's another thing is, um, you know, the custom blocks that we've built for Block Party, they're just for the world, but um, we're going to be building custom blocks that are following brand specifications for our clients. Um, and so again, that's another, you know, unless you do like Beaver Builder modules, you're, pro you're probably not really doing stuff like that right now exactly. So that's another, um, another change for developers. Um, for the site assemblers, and, and what I mean by that, and I don't mean that pejoratively in any way, what I mean by that is people that aren't necessarily developers, but they use page builders or other instruments to kind of create their sites. Um, well, eventually, and again, I say eventually because Gutenberg's still not there. It's, it's you know, what is end of June? It's supposed to be merged in the core, and there's still a lot of issues and still a lot of things to work out. And I'm a little bit suspicious that August is actually a real uh, merge date. But um, I think eventually it will be, uh, it will be the built-in page builder that is the go-to. Um, and then, of course, you know, just to let you know that there's a lot of legacy plugins that may not support Gutenberg right when it comes out. Plugins that ne haven't necessarily been updated in a while. Um, that's just something to think about. Um, okay, this is where I get excited. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I don't really love the word entrepreneur, but I guess there's not really, I don't know, a business person. Um, for a long time in my professional life, I kind of fought against that. Um, at some point, I just learned to just accept the fact that I am who I am. I get excited about building things and uh, making things and making things happen. Um, so whatever that is, I'm that. And um, so for those of you that are on the same page with that, um, this is an enormous disruption in the WordPress ecosystem. I mean, it's the biggest one in a long time. Um, and when there's disruption, there is opportunity. There's a tremendous amount of opportunity. Um, and for us, the way we look at it is, it's an opportunity for us to specialize, to differentiate, and it's an opportunity for us to stop being a local agency. I mean, we do work around the country, but still a lot of our WordPress bread and butter is local. It's a chance for us to uh, become something more than that in the WordPress space. Um, and it's not just for us, I think it's for everyone. So there's a tremendous amount, tremendous amount of opportunities. Um, finally, um, I think it's important to, when, when thinking about this, thinking about the controversy, I think it's important to focus on a couple of questions. So I'm going to actually start with the middle question, which is, why did I come to Grand Rapids to do this talk? I'm all, I'm all the way out in Albuquerque, right? Why did I want to come out here? Why did I apply? Graciously uh, accepted to talk. Um, because I don't know too much about Grand Rapids. My wife saw your guys' video, um, the American Pie one, and uh, she was like, oh, yeah, the American Pie. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know too much about Grand Rapids. I've been to Michigan a couple of times, but um, never here. And, um, but what I do know, it's not a big city. It's not, the, not the Detroit. It's not Chicago, right? Um, and so I see a lot of overlap in that sense with Albuquerque. Um, definitely not, um, you know, what, what, are, what is Albuquerque famous for? We're, you know, it's where Bug Bunny made, Bugs Bunny made the wrong turn, right? Breaking Bad or something like that? Yeah. So, so, um, so I, I see that probably there's a lot of similarities in our ecosystems. And um, so for me, I'm just excited to tell sp specifically the entrepreneurs, but really everyone, this is a huge opportunity. This is a tremendous opportunity. Um, and it's a tremendous opportunity to differentiate. And uh, I want to share that with you guys because, um, you know, I'm a Met fan. I root for the underdog. Um, you know, so who, who's WordPress for, right? What, what, you know, what, what do I, like, we don't do a tremendous amount of WordPress work anymore at my company. Um, part of that is because it's really hard to scale and grow just doing WordPress in New Mexico. You know, New Mexico is like the, you know, it's at the bottom of everything. Um, uh, you know, if it weren't for Mississippi and Alabama, you know, we, you know, 
Uh, no, no, nothing against them. I'm just saying, you know, like when, when they release all the statistics, you know, we're like 48 or whatever. So, you know, we're not exactly the wealthiest state. And so, um, so in order to kind of grow our company, we've had to do other kinds of work. But um, um, WordPress, what I love about WordPress and what I love about WordCamp is that um, this is the, you know, this is the, you know, for me, this is the people's platform. Um, in a way that uh, other platforms and other technologies aren't. It's for us, the DIYers, right? Um, it's for us that like to make things happen and deliver value to clients or just create kind of what we want um, online. And so um, fundamentally, I see Gutenberg as just an improvement on the platform that has already given us so much. And um, I'm all about that. Um, and what, you know, again, why are we so passionate about WordPress and the ecosystem? Because when I started with WordPress in 2015, I went to the um, Albuquerque WordPress meetup. And people were so welcoming and so excited. And, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just starting out as a, you know, developer in WordPress. I didn't, didn't know a ton. They are so welcoming, so excited. You know, I've been to other developer conferences, software development conferences. It's a different vibe. And uh, so, you know, for me, um, I don't do things just because, uh, you know, I'm not completely motivated by uh, money. You know, I'm an entrepreneur, but part of the reason that I'm an entrepreneur is I get to do what I want, be independent, and, um, you know, make the life I want for me professionally. So um, to me, like, I've always felt like WordPress gave my company an opportunity to grow, and, and uh, you know, we're very much indebted. And so, again, like, Focusing on the controversy is fine. I mean, to me, it's just, it is what it is. There were a lot of mistakes made, a lot of miscommunications and so forth. But um, if you try it and you use it, and especially if you get a chance to use some custom blocks, it's better. Again, that's my opinion. It's better. It's a better experience. And that's what we want. We want a better experience for clients, and we want a better experience for ourselves. Um, so yeah, that's about it. That's all I got. Um, let me take the questions um, if I had any. OK. How will Gutenberg handle what is currently in meta boxes? Uh, for instance, on one side, I have a CPT that uses advanced custom fields, blah, 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 et cetera. OK. A um, lot of plugins uh, will, I, so the, the plan, and currently, what, what goes on is like, let's say you use like a plugin like Yoast, right? And probably a lot of you guys use Yoast or some, something like that, right? And what, what, what happens is you, you get meta boxes below, right, that allow you to make tweaks to the SEO settings. They just show up below the post content right now. Um, specifically, what happens with ACF, I don't know. We don't use ACF. Um, so I, I, I don't have a complete answer to that. But what I will say is that. Um, you know, like the, the default behavior is that the custom meta boxes will stay. They'll just be below the post content. Um, how easy will it be to create custom blocks? Great question. Um, it took our senior dev, who's a React guy, a day to kind of wrap his head around what was going on. And it took probably a week for him to build the pie chart block to where it was in a stable place. Um, but you know, he's a talented guy. Um, and I think it won't be, it depends where you're at. If you're just a PHP guy and that's what you do, um, you're gonna have to learn React. And that's a different paradigm, right? So with React, you have, you're gonna need to uh, know how to use NPM. Uh, you're gonna need to know probably how to use Webpack. Uh, there's a whole JavaScript, uh, implementation and deployment workflow that you're going to have to learn. So I don't think it's going to be easy. Um, and also, by the way, the Gutenberg documentation, I, I can't say is great right now. Um, so you have to, you just kind of have to uh, figure it out on your own to some extent, come up with creative solutions. But Gutenberg, you know, it's open source. It's on GitHub. You can contribute to it. And so I encourage you guys to take a look at that and, and contribute as, as you can. Um, let's see here. What else? Okay. 
Will there be tons of them available on the plugin repository? Um, I don't know. Uh, there are some right now. If you type in Gutenberg, you'll find some stuff. Um, like the pie chart thing we built, I, I don't know if there's that yet, data visualization stuff. Um, I don't think I can really talk about our product in any kind of meaningful way uh, here. But um, feel free to ask me afterwards, and I can kind of show you um, what we've built. Um, it's not on the repo uh, yet, but um, I can show you what we've built. Um, you know, to me, again, um, to be first to market and um, ready for when 5.0 comes out and all of a sudden millions of websites are using uh, Gutenberg as the default editor, um, I think would be a smart business move if uh, you have an agency. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm just gonna go through all these first, but I'll get, yeah, I'll get to you. Um, what happens with the legacy plugins? Will they still work? Yeah, plugins will still work, but, but there are some plugins that depend on tiny MCE to some extent that obviously won't work as, as, you, as you might want. Um, there are a lot of really great plugins that are really dependable but haven't been updated in a long time. I, I can't speak for that. Um, I think you're going to have to test it out. Um, there is a plugin. There is a plugin on the repo. I believe I can't remember what it's called, but it's a plugin that lets you test out your sites with Gutenberg. It gives you kind of like a report card. So you might want to check that out. I don't Google it. I can't remember the name right off the top. Um, what do user roles look like with Gutenberg? I think the same. I don't think that, uh, I don't know for sure, but I, I, I haven't run into any issues. You know, you're going to have the same permissions and same, same similar idea with the user roles as it currently stands. Um, more fluent in PHP. I thought of becoming more fluent in PHP. Should I instead now focus on React? Um, oh, I don't know. Like, so uh, I went to a coding boot camp and um, um, long to, uh, years ago. And uh, I, so I go back there and speak sometimes at the coding boot camp. And people always ask me, well, what should I learn React? Should I learn Vue? Should I learn, you know, whatever. And um, I'm just, I'm always encouraging people to be polyglots and um, just be good software developers. You know, st stick with something, learn. And you can take a lot of what you learn in PHP and take it to JavaScript. It's just different, different syntax. Uh, but a lot of the same principles, you know, they stay the same. Um, so if you're just committed to learning the syntax, learning the workflow, learning some of the quirks, um, you'll be fine. Um, I, so that's not really an answer, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but um, there's, there's still, there's still going to be a lot of work for PHP. I mean, there's going to be, you know, you know, there's going to be legacy work in WordPress forever. And you know, I think plugin development is, is you know, still going to be largely a PHP affair, depending on what you're doing. Okay, any other questions from the crowd? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Um, good question. I'm not necessarily sure beyond that. I suspect that Gutenberg posts are going to be more performant than, let's say, other page builder posts, right? Um, because the way Gutenberg stores all the post content is HTML comments. Um, and um, with the Depending on which page builder, some page builders do all kinds of crazy things like add tables and uh, so so anyway, um, from a performance standpoint, I think that's probably where you're going to see the biggest difference. Um, but um, good question. I wish I had a better answer. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so um, like I said, I don't write a ton of code anymore. My guys built most of the stuff. But uh, yeah, I think roughly that's right. Um, and, and the way we have it set up is that we have a plugin that has a whole bunch of blocks, and each block has its styles. But you know, purposely, we try and keep it um, you know, minimal as possible and inherit as many of the theme styles right, as possible. Right? Um, it, it will 
kind of depend how you build sites, what that looks like. And I would say this also, there's not a clear way to build a Gutenberg block yet. I mean, there's not a best practice, this is exactly the way you do it. A lot of people are experimenting with a lot of different um, uh, ways to do it, so I got like a minute. When are they going to add a font list? Um, make it, do it, do it yourself, yes. Yes. Um, there's a plugin for that. You can go back to Tiny MC, but why? No, no, I mean, I know why, because your client that has your vi the vintage 2010 site that you've been maintaining for a long time doesn't feel like changing, and that's fine. Cool. Yeah, so there, there will be options. Yes? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, yeah, that is a, as a best practice, I'm sure that that is going to be the same thing. Um, I think the way theme development is going to play out, I, I, don't, I don't know yet for sure, but I think it's going to be templates of blocks that are kind of laid out. So a, a client will create a new page using a template, and there will be blocks that are just part of the page that they can fill in with content. To some extent, I think that's the way it'll start playing out. Yes? Oh, yeah, good question. Um, so yeah, that's, they haven't tackled that one yet with widgets. So, and, and, but I suspect that it's gonna go in that direction. But yeah, no widgets are, yeah. Okay, I'm out of time. Um, please feel free to, like I'll be around. Please feel free to come up to me, talk to me. Um, thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you guys. Um, I really appreciate it.